our lead out, um, or even indeed for taking power around existing fields on existing fences, there's a variety of options of insulator, which you can use with wooden posts. So you see here we have a screw-in insulator. You could of course use the staple insulator. Or if, you'd, if you're interested in keeping the animals perhaps further away from the fence, then a variety of offsets are really useful as this takes the wire away from the fence and keeps all of the stock pressure off the existing fence. It actually helps preserve the life of the existing fence as well as providing new power around the boundary. So again, these come in different lengths. Sometimes it's useful to, um, to use one that's side driven, maybe mount it lower down for, for younger stock, or there's a variety of different lengths of top driven insulators. Again, for vegetation, perhaps behind the fence line, you can keep the power away and stop the voltage being lost. Um, here we have a galvanized steel post, which um, is uh, undoubtedly going to last longer than the, the wooden post, natural stock fencing. Here we have a five strand, four live and bottom dead. One of the benefits to this style of fencing is that if you're on rented ground or you need to reseed, it can be taken out very quickly and effectively and again reused. Different types of posts require different types of insulators. A good quality insulator is needed to prevent any leakage within the fence. We have plastic insulators here on the metal post and we also have special insulators for the wooden posts. We have fiberglass posts as well which are self-insulated and they just clip onto the wires. For fiberglass posts there's, there's two types available. There's, there's a plain post and so that's, that's great, that's really cost effective and that's good um, where the ground contour is pretty consistent. Okay, it's just a plain post. So it will keep the wires at a consistent height, but it's not very, it hasn't got a lot of resistance about being pulled out or pushed into the ground. So there we can stick with fiberglass, we just need to change to a different type of post. So this is what they call an arrow post, and that sits in the ground. It's got a lot of support at the base, makes it a lot stronger, but also that, uh, that barbed head stops it being pulled back out again. So you can continue using a post, which is really quick and easy, but it's got a bit more strength. The reason we use temporary electric fencing is because these are fences which we may move and we'll change the position of them to change the size of the allocation for the group of animals. We may not use them all the time, but particularly on the shoulders of the season where we may need more paddocks to cope with adverse weather conditions so the animals can be shifted more regularly, a temporary fence is something which is quick and light and easy to set up and it means it's not a big chore to use it and it's going to help to increase or improve your use of grass at that part of the season. So key things with temporary fencing, there's a whole variety of equipment available, different styles of posts, different types of uh, winding gear, of reels and, and other packs to set the fences up with. The key message really is, is that it should be quick and easy and it should only take one person to put the fence up. So value your time and also have a look around, do some research and, and see what option suits you best. For cattle, growing cattle, one wire will normally be sufficient. Suckler cows with calves and two wires, again, normally sufficient. And for sheep, we're looking at three or four wire fences, again, because these are the quickest to put up, and this is a fence which we're going to be moving, so we want it to be nice and easy. Mm -hmm.